You can raise half of the protein requirements for your family of four in less than 10 minutes a day in this system. Marjorie Wildcraft, y'all. I was wondering if she would. <laughs> I was wondering if she'd be barefoot in November. Yeah. <laughs> so tell everybody, Marjorie, what you what are you all about? Hey, I'm Marjorie Wildcraft, and I'm the founder of the Grow Network, which is the online home of a global community of people who are producing their own food and medicine. We love Justin and Rebecca, the beautiful one. I Sweet. will say it on camera. Yeah. Yeah. And so homegrown food on every table is what we're all about. And the purpose of the Grow Network is to stop the destruction of the earth because Preach. commercial agriculture. Preach. And I told them yesterday that if there's anybody, I don't know anybody who wants it more than you, that homegrown food be on everybody's table. Yeah. yeah. You're totally legit. <laughs> okay, now we're going to see. Legit. Yeah. Bare feet November spells legit. All right. I think we're going to see a very interesting rabbit system mm -hmm. that is humane, beyond organic, and something that anybody could do. Is that right? It's absolutely okay. right. You're going to love this. And simple. Like you can raise half of the protein requirements for your family of four in less than 10 minutes a day. What? Wow. Say that again. This awesome. is, I hear a headline. I hear a headline. <laughs> yes, there's a headline. Say it again. <laughs> you can raise half of the protein requirements for your family of four in less than 10 minutes a day in this system. Okay, you got to show us how. You got to show us how. Okay, guys. Yeah, that's what we need. <laughs> yeah. So we would just add five minutes and we'd have a family of six. Yeah. <laughs> 15 minutes a day for us. Is that right? Yeah, that would be 15 minutes. Where's your lawnmower, Marjorie? Yeah, <laughs> about that. Actually, I had the rabbits out there for a while in cool. tractors, and they, they kept digging out and getting out, and I said, this ain't working. I need something else, you know? So okay. I set up this um, this area here that we got is fenced in, and it used to be a garden, but it yeah. got uh, so overgrown with trees that it's not working as a garden. I said, just put the rabbits in there and let them run yeah. free range in this pen, right? Yeah. So it's kind of cool. No, I love it. I love it. No need for a lawnmower here. Why, when you can just grow food? So the rabbits just stay in here and, and gates where I need to get over. I just put a thing so that I can just go over it. And the okay. rabbits don't ever jump out. You need help? No, it's a car. All right. <laughs> I'm gonna freaking drive. Okay. So I've got a, a buck and uh, three breeding does in here and then they reproduce like rabbits. <laughs> <laughs> but I've got almost everything in here. Now I do need to bring in some feed, but for example, this tree right here is rabbit feed. You just throw it on the ground and the rabbits will come in. So uh, I grow a lot of stuff for them, just the plants that are in here. A well, general principle with any livestock is you can't have them on the same ground all the time because they eat everything up and it's all done. So I fence off, did a little paddocks for them, and you can see here where I've got like clover and rye and oats growing and uh, it's fenced off from them and when this gets up to you know six or eight inches I'll let the rabbits in there for a while to graze it and then I'll kick them out mm. so it's like a form of paddock rotation cool have you trimmed this back or is, are you killing that off this or, what's the story on that yeah well these are these were plants that I was feed that I was growing to feed them. okay these were okay. that were but I leave the stems this high because it helps to interrupt um, hawks or owls ah, or things like that like so it. you'll see I'm leaving a lot of them up around and look how places. well it's recovering you're getting mm -hmm. grasses and clovers and all kinds of goodies yeah they had eaten this all down from the summer and now I put the winter crop in that's why I'm fencing them off because they would destroy that right yep. yeah let me show you another cool system here in the summertime, I cover this up, right? Yeah. Because uh, I don't, I want this to stay cool. Underneath here is a nice cool place for the rabbits to hang out. I see they've dug a hole there. Oh yeah, they've dug a hole. And I'll show you something funny about when people say, you know, that phrase, you know, going down a rabbit hole. Yeah. So <laughs> this is full of water and in the summertime, uh, I got it covered so it stays cool. And then underneath there, it's a cool spot, right? Now that it's winter time and all our foliage is dying back, when the sun comes out, this will warm it up and underneath there will be a warm spot. Nice. But this also has water with a gravity feed thing. What? And it's a watering system. Cool. For the rabbits. So you're using water as a thermal mass and you're also using it for its watering system. That's, what, that's partly why it doesn't take much time because you have an automatic watering system here. You don't have to water them every day. That is why livestock is so much easier than 
than, than plants. <laughs> <laughs> you believe livestock are easier than growing plants. I can agree with that. Uh, I've traveled just like you, Justin. I've traveled all over the place and always interviewing people. And in every single bioregion on earth, I say, what's the easiest thing here? And they always say livestock. <laughs> even in the tropics. Yeah. Even in the tropics. Yeah. Oh, look at there's Blackie. Is that the buck? That is one that a doe? is a doe. The other one that's solid black without any gray is the buck. Do they have access to each other all the time or do you? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I don't control it. The only way I control it is I make sure I know who the buck is. Okay. And then he can, uh, and I'm gonna... Actually, one of the things these guys do dig a lot, and so one of the things I'm looking at doing is catching a mm -hmm. wild cottontail buck. Because mm -hmm. I've been watching the cottontails in the wild and they don't dig. Uh -huh. They just kind of scratch and make a depression, and I want to see if I can breed them with the domestic rabbits and breed out that characteristic of digging because it'll make a much better rabbit, even for the uh, rabbit tractor systems and other things. So, mm. yeah. Neat. Let me show you one other food system I'm working on that's kind of cool. What I got growing in here is clover, and what I'm trying to do is set it up so that when the clover gets a certain height, it'll grow through this. The rabbits can hop up here and eat the tops, but nice. um, I'm trying to figure out what height do I need um, this one's, you know, only a couple of inches high and I ho hope, you know, I'm thinking I might need to make it a little bit higher. Mm. So what is the base level of plant we need so that when they come and graze off the tops, the plants will still be healthy and keep providing Great food, system. Right? I did that this summer. This was a sweet potato patch and the sweet potatoes grew out through the sides oh, here. Neat. The rabbits just nibbled all around the edges and I dug up all the sweet potatoes. Good idea. Yeah. What do you do for them in the winter when things aren't growing? Well, that it, in Texas here we are. This is so oh. we got clover, we got vetch, we okay. got rye, we got oats. That's why I have these other paddocks okay. here. Actually, what I'm getting out of this system, and I don't actually keep track of litters, which is the way you would normally do it with conventional cages. I just count the number of rabbits I get, and I get about 75 to 85 rabbits a year, and these okay. are big fat ones. They're like six seven eight pound we got an eight pound rabbit in the stew pot in the house there <laughs> it looks like some duckweed looks like yeah, free protein to me yeah it's free duckweed <laughs> but uh, this is also just a little backup water system because okay. you never want to have just one or two water systems even you want to have three and this doesn't have any runoff that goes uh -huh. in it or anything it's just we dug it by hand and every now and then i fill it with a hose and i actually like the duckweed because it keeps the water from evaporating out so why this colony system is what you call why why not hutches a hutch you got you know what I can leave this for a week and not and be gone and the only thing I have to do is feed get somebody to feed the dog who protects the whole thing uh. so my I, I regularly go for a week and my husband my children nobody has to come in here or do anything this whole thing is completely you know there's enough food there's enough water there's enough shelter there's everything that these guys need right in here worry about the heat like do you so is that what like the the barrel of water and stuff like that, that's how you protect yep. against. Yep, the barrel the of water really in the summertime will yeah. keep it cool. Okay. Then also we do, because I'm growing these trees in here, they got lots of areas okay. that are in the shade. shade. But yeah, and we're actually breeding rabbits here in the summertime, in July, I've had litters of rabbits in here okay. that you could not do if you were cage raised or even if you were tractor raised because they can stay cooler. Mm. They can move. Because that's a concern. Mm -hmm. with rabbits is mm -hmm. heat. I feel like I've picked that up somewhere, but we don't know much about rabbits, Justin, I've never raised them, so. In, in Texas, you really can't breed rabbits from like June to, to September, because oh, it's too hot. But you can in this system. But you can in this system. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. system Marjorie mm -hmm. for water you have your backup pond right there uh -huh. you have your automatic water feeder and I guess your third system is just from the house from well water actually we have a couple of those different water automatic okay. water oh, okay yeah. yeah and then for food oh look she's eating that browse you you harvested for her so they're eating this browse you've planted have you planted this? You just like oats or something? Yeah, I, did. I just throw it out and sometimes okay. they sprout. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so you plant stuff for them. Yeah. And the way you don't overdo that is you have guarded areas mm -hmm. that you let grow up and then you let them in and then you move that around. There's another guarded area right there, yeah, right? There's another one coming along. 
Okay, yeah. sweet. Is there any other feed? What about supplemental feed? Do you buy feed for them? I do. I have a mineral block that they can get to, and then occasionally I'll give them either oats or pellets, and they uh, have free access to that because and and hay. Um, but okay. really, and I really ultimately want to get this system, and I'm working on more research on what plants to grow to have this whole thing be completely self-sufficient. Uh, compare rabbits to chickens real quick. It seems like maybe this is maybe going to get you... It may, might be a little easier to become 100% self-sufficient than if we're chickens. Herbivores are always going to be easier to raise and feed than um, omnivores. Mm. Because these guys only want plants, right? Chickens, yeah. you got to come up with other stuff. Plants are easier and less expensive to come by. Uh huh. And these guys eat weeds. You know, <laughs> you know when I'm doing the trimming or when I, you know, uh, in another month or two we're going to be um, pruning the fruit trees and stuff. You throw yeah. all the all the twigs in here. They love it. They eat that bark. You know, when you whenever you're pruning or doing any landscaping, you just throw the landscape stuff in here. They eat it. So, awesome. Right. We're about to have rabbit stew for lunch. How much did that cost? One rabbit in uh, the pot. Gosh, you know, I haven't done the numbers because we really don't spend that much. You don't much. need to. It's not we a don't, stress. There's not really any money involved in it. You know, we raise the rabbits. I buy them a little supplemental. There's much less feed than you'd buy for if you were raising chickens or anything else. And in that stew is going to be some homegrown potatoes. And, yeah, I mean, really, it was all done here. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. It's good. It's all good. Right. Delicious, too. Just and you just throw that out? Actually, sometimes I just throw it out, and then because sometimes I put it in this pan here. They've been making a mess. Because of what they don't eat, I guess, could theoretically grow up. Yeah. Which is some oat greens. Right. If they don't like it as oat growth, then they can eat it as oat sprouts. But what if somebody's starting out? Should they just section off a back a part of their backyard and just throw some rabbits out there, or what should they do? No, I'd really recommend you start with cages. Okay. And uh, because that way you can control things. You have better access to your rabbits. You. There's a lot to learn, and it's okay. a lot better in a more controlled situation when yeah. you're learning. Well, at least you have manure can fall through, and you can harvest that manure and do something with it if you wish. Oh, yeah. People talk about going down a rabbit hole. <laughs> We're going to see what that means. We're going to see what it means to go down a rabbit hole. Big old long stick. And I imagine it what? But that's a long ends. Ways. Look at that. That's a, at least five feet. That it just ends, yeah. So they don't get out. No, and uh, but that's one thing is if it looks like they're gonna, you know, if it looks like they're gonna make another thing and pop up somewhere, I have to go close it all up. Oh, okay, okay. But they'll often have litters in there too. What do you think about those rabbits? Um, Would you like some of those rabbits? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> of course. You gonna try to pet one of those? You can't. Poor Mr. Brownie can't catch one. You're trying. Homegrown potatoes. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Supplemented squash. Mm -hmm. But I would say 75% of this meal is off the land. Did you guys like it? I would say so. What about you, Mr. Brown? Mm -hmm. I don't see any more rabbit. Did you like it? I loved it. You loved it? Oh, good. Get you some more. Thank you, Marjorie. This was so wonderful to see the operation, to eat the operation. It was great. You're doing a good job. Yeah. Homegrown food on this table. She's living the dream, living what she preaches. Absolutely. If folks want more of you, where, they, where should they go? Mm, thegrownetwork.com. Highly recommend it. Yep. L wonderful amount of resources there. All yep. kinds of stuff. We've done some good stuff with Justin too. We oh yeah. Do more. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll do more. Say, I know I'm beautiful. 
Hello, and I'm, beautiful. And I'm good enough. I'm good enough. Smart I'm enough. Smart enough. And dug on it, people like me. We're about to have a chicken stew for lunch. How much does that cost you? Rabbit what? stew? Rabbit, sorry. 